a new interstellar visitor has arrived with a chemical signature unlike any comet we've ever seen. What if it holds the recipe of another star system? Preliminary results from Webb and the Very Large Telescope show a shocking pattern. A coma dominated by carbon dioxide, almost no water, and even a mysterious hint of nickel without iron. Scientists are now in a race to confirm these extraordinary clues. This is a scientific investigation where every signal must be tested and every mystery must be solved. A visitor unlike any other. For only the third time in recorded history, astronomers are observing an interstellar object, an object that formed outside our solar system and is now passing through it. The first case was one I slash Oumuamua in 2017. Consensus among researchers is that Oumuamua was highly unusual. It showed no clear cometary tail and its motion was difficult to explain with solar radiation pressure alone. The second case, 2i Borisov in 2019, behaved much more like a textbook comet, venting gas and dust with a bright extended tail dominated by water and carbon traces. Those two examples gave scientists a rough template. One path extraordinarily odd, one path reassuringly familiar. By contrast, the third case, 3i Atlas, arrived carrying a chemical and visual pattern that fit neither category. At about 2.8 astronomical units from the Sun, roughly the distance to the asteroid belt, many comets begin showing strong, water-driven activity. As sunlight warms their surfaces, frozen water sublimates and gives a distinct signal across several wavelengths that telescopes detect easily. Based on that baseline, astronomers expected 3i Atlas to reveal water vapor as the main feature, strengthening as it moved inward. Instead, the water signature was unexpectedly weak when compared to the other gases present. This was not a simple variation in strength, but a clear shift away from the usual water-dominated picture of cometary chemistry at that distance. Its visible form added to the puzzle. Comets often display long, bright tails stretching millions of kilometers, driven by water vapor pulling dust outward into space. Observers of 3i Atlas instead reported a short, diffuse tail that dispersed quickly. Why it appeared this way is not yet clear. Several hypotheses exist. The comet could have a relatively small nucleus, the dust released may form a coma that responds unusually to sunlight, or the surface could host a crust that suppresses the steady release of vapor. None of these explanations has yet been confirmed, but each represents a possible avenue to test. When we compare its chemistry against the standard comet recipe, the contrasts sharpen further. In most comets studied within our solar system, water vapor dominates, with carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide contributing smaller fractions. 3. I Atlas appeared inverted. The primary gas identified was carbon dioxide, while water trailed far behind. This ratio alone is rare. Further complicating the picture, carbon monoxide, the gas commonly seen to some degree in comets, was barely detected at all. Its absence suggests either that the comet formed in an environment with little CO to begin with, or that the molecules remained trapped in the interior and were not released under current solar heating. Both hypotheses hint at an origin environment, unlike what our own solar system provides. Taken as a whole, 3i Atlas differs from its predecessors in notable ways. Oumuamua confused astronomers with a lack of a visible tail. Borisov reinforced the canonical behavior of volatile, rich, water-dominated comets. Atlas, however, diverges sharply by highlighting carbon dioxide while suppressing water and carbon monoxide. Both its external look and its chemical fingerprint indicate that the processes driving its activity do not match the playbook built from decades of local comet observations. Because of these unusual signals, research teams worldwide are not simply comparing Atlas to earlier interstellar visitors, but instead treating it as a new test case in its own right. Observing strategies shifted quickly, time on major telescopes was scheduled earlier than usual, and priority was given to instruments sensitive to compositional details. The goal has been to identify whether these striking early measurements will hold once data from multiple observatories are combined and cross-checked. The net result is that Atlas carved out a distinct profile among the only three interstellar objects ever studied. Its distinctive chemistry and morphology are setting the stage for the next line of inquiry. If a comet exhales gases we have never before recorded, what exactly do those signals tell us about its origin? The clues in the chemistry. To make sense of these unusual patterns, the strongest clues come from chemistry itself. 
The tool at the center of this work is spectroscopy, the method of spreading light into its component wavelengths, like a prism creating a rainbow. Each molecule absorbs and emits light in a very specific way, leaving sharp lines that act like fingerprints. From these lines, astronomers can identify which gases are escaping a comet's surface or its coma. The diffuse cloud of gas and dust that forms around the nucleus when ice is sublimate under sunlight. For decades, this has been the standard method for interpreting comet activity, and it is the same approach now applied to 3I Atlas, both the James Webb Space Telescope, sensitive to infrared light, and the Very Large Telescope in Chile, observing invisible and near-infrared recorded emissions from Atlas. According to preliminary results described by the research teams, spectroscopy showed a pattern strongly dominated by carbon dioxide. Data reported from JWST suggested a breakdown of roughly 95% CO2 and only about 5% water vapour. VELT and other ground-based surveys found similarly weak water lines and little trace of carbon monoxide. Importantly, these figures are not final. They are early measurements that require confirmation by additional instruments. Still, when compared against hundreds of comets in our own solar system, this ratio looks highly unusual. At distances beyond the asteroid belt where Atlas was observed, the expectation is that water sublimation normally dominates. A CO2 heavy signal with suppressed water does not fit that baseline. Carbon monoxide too presented a puzzle. In solar system comets, CO is often measured alongside carbon dioxide, albeit in smaller amounts. It helps astronomers probe outer system activity because CO vaporizes at cold temperatures where water and CO2 remain frozen. But in the observations reported so far, Atlas showed almost no CO at all. One working hypothesis is that it formed in an environment poor in carbon monoxide from the start. Another is that CO is trapped deep inside and current heating has not released it. Either way, the absence removes one of the markers scientists use to identify objects that condensed beyond the frost line in young planetary systems. The gas phase chemistry wasn't the only surprise. Spectroscopy flagged a narrow emission line that teams interpreted as nickel atoms. Metals reveal themselves in spectra as bright, discrete lines at characteristic wavelengths, different from the broader features of molecules. Nickel is not unheard of in comets, but normally iron appears with it. The two condense together in stellar material and are usually locked in similar phases by the time they reach comets. Seeing nickel without iron challenges that pattern and must be handled carefully. Two hypotheses offer natural explanations. Iron could be present but hidden, perhaps bound in mineral grains that this observing setup cannot detect. Or the venting process might selectively release nickel in a form visible to the instruments, while iron remains in solid or less detectable states. Until repeat measurements confirm the lines, the nickel result remains tentative. A further chemical feature was cyanide gas, noted in past surveys with other comets as a regular tracer of activity. In Atlas, cyanide levels were reported to increase as the object moved inward toward the sun. That trend, while not unprecedented, is scientifically useful. It implies that cyanide compounds reside under the surface and are released in greater amounts once solar heating penetrates deeper layers. Rather than an alarming signal, Cyanide here contributes to a profile of how volatiles are stored and released at different depths within the nucleus. When added together, these findings make the inventory of Atlas look unlike the recipes familiar from solar system comets. Carbon dioxide appeared to dominate instead of water. Carbon monoxide was weak to absent. Nickel appeared without its usual iron companion, and cyanide increased with inner solar heating. Each feature on its own is notable. Placed alongside one another, they outline a chemistry that does not line up with standard comet expectations. The cautious scientific response is to describe these as reported anomalies that invite further testing. For now, the chemistry presents possibilities, but not conclusions. The published numbers and spectral lines highlight differences, yet all of them depend on instruments working under specific conditions. Before astronomers can be sure these ingredients truly belong to Atlas and not to observational quirks, the signals have to be checked remeasured, and compared across methods. That next step will focus less on the novelty of the data and more on testing whether the signals stand up under scrutiny, testing the mystery. With signals so unusual, the next step is to lay out a careful sequence of tests, an investigation plan designed to separate reliable evidence from false leads. 
astronomers follow this process in a stepwise way, moving from repeated measurements to independent confirmations, until each observation can be judged secure. Think of it less as a sudden breakthrough and more as a checklist where each item must pass before the result is trusted. First, there is repeat spectroscopy across independent instruments. Spectroscopy, the splitting of light into wavelengths to identify chemical fingerprints, will be run multiple times using the James Webb Space Telescope Telescope, the Very Large Telescope, and the upcoming SPHEREX survey mission. The scientific hypothesis being tested here is simple. If carbon dioxide truly dominates the comet's gases, and if nickel really appears without iron, these features should recur in spectra, taken with different telescopes, at different times, and through different instruments. Agreement strengthens the case, while disagreement suggests either measurement errors or unstable chemistry. Second, teams will cross-calibrate instruments and check for misidentifications. This step aims to rule out artifacts caused by calibration, background noise, or atmospheric interference. A weak line that appears to be nickel may instead be the result of contamination or a misread wavelength. To guard against this, astronomers will compare the atomic transition wavelengths of nickel and iron, run the raw spectra through independent data pipelines, and check against known sources of interference, such as Earth's own atmosphere, the so-called telluric features. The hypothesis under test here is whether the unusual nickel line is a real property of the comet or an artifact of how the data were processed. Third, brightness profile analysis comes into play. In plain terms, this means measuring how the comet's brightness changes outward from its center. The solid nucleus should look like a concentrated point of light, while the surrounding coma, the diffuse cloud of gas and dust, appears broader. To analyze this, astronomers fit telescope images using a model that combines a sharp, star-like source, the nucleus, with a broader halo, the coma. This method, known as point spread function fitting, helps estimate how much light comes from the solid core and how much from the gases. The hypothesis here is whether the observed signals originate in the permanent nucleus or in the evolving coma. Fourth, plans call for direct imaging of the nucleus when the geometry allows. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter will have a favorable vantage point on October 3rd, 2025 when Atlas passes at an estimated distance of about 29 million kilometers. At that time, its camera could achieve a resolution of around 30 kilometers per pixel. This is coarse by planetary imaging standards, but it may still let astronomers constrain the size and shape of the nucleus more effectively than Earth-based telescopes. These images will not resolve fine detail, but could help distinguish how much light belongs to the nucleus versus the surrounding coma. Refining models of gas release rates. Fifth. Astronomers will extend the investigation to radio telescopes. Molecules emit radiation, not just in visible or infrared light, but also at radio frequencies when they change energy states. Lines from cyanide, for example, can be detected at these wavelengths. The hypothesis under test is whether cyanide reported in optical data is confirmed by radio emission. If both signals agree, the case for cyanide being truly present grows much stronger. Timing is critical across all of these steps. As Atlas moves closer to the Sun, its rate of outgassing can shift quickly. Molecules released in abundance one week may fade or surge by the next. This variability means overlapping observations, done at nearly the same time with different telescopes, are essential to test whether chemistry remains stable or is changing from moment to moment. Without such coordination, any one dataset could capture only a temporary phase and not the comet's true character. Taken together, this layered approach transforms unexpected signals into hypotheses that can be put to the test. Repeat spectroscopy confirms or denies unusual gas ratios. Cross-calibration checks whether metal lines are authentic. Brightness profile fitting distinguishes nucleus from coma. Direct orbital imaging provides scale for the nucleus. Radio searches back up molecular detections. Each step strengthens or weakens confidence, narrowing the gap between speculation and evidence. What remains open, of course, is what these results will ultimately imply. As the analysis continues, the central issue will shift from how the chemistry is measured to what confirmed signals mean for our understanding of interstellar comets. And that is where the larger picture begins to take shape. Conclusion. Consensus. Comets in our solar system typically form beyond the frost line, where water and carbon monoxide freeze in abundance. That sets the baseline expectation. Water and sea O-rich bodies 
with secondary amounts of carbon dioxide. Reports from 3i Atlas challenge that picture, but they remain hypotheses awaiting confirmation. If the CO2 heavy and water poor profile is verified, two implications follow. First, it would mean formation in a parent system under different temperature and chemistry conditions. Second, it would show that interstellar small bodies can hold a wider variety of volatile inventories than those we see locally. The nickel signal, if real, would be extremely unusual and must be tested carefully. Natural explanations, such as detection limits, ionization effects, or selective release, must be excluded before stronger conclusions are drawn. The key takeaway for now is that astronomy advances by testing and cross-checking. Upcoming steps, multi-instrument spectroscopy, brightness profile analysis, and Mars reconnaissance orbiter imaging will be decisive in turning preliminary reports into validated results. If you found this investigation useful, consider subscribing or adding a comment on which hypothesis you find most plausible.